back to Front Runner. My name is James Bowen here, and today I'm here with Pierre of Blockchain Radio. Welcome, Pierre. James, great to be with you. It is. It's a pleasure to hear from you, Pierre. Now, Pierre, you you are very much attuned to what's happening on, in the blockchain space, and you hear from different regions, from everyone, from the practitioners, the people that are implementing it, as well as from the government side, the politician side. And I was wondering today whether we could draw a bit of a, a, a heat map or a, an action picture in terms of what's happening out there in the block space. You speak with many different people, including on your site, Blockchain Radio, blockchainradio.com. You also have other people doing shows as well from all kinds of different parts of the world. And today we're hoping for maybe a summary of that. So let's start drawing that heat map, that action map. Where is the action in terms of regions for blockchain? What parts of the world are really focusing on this and doing hot stuff? I, I for example, in some of my readings, I've come across places like Estonia. But uh, where do you see the action places? Yeah, that's right, James. Uh, it's a great uh, question. Uh, to consider here where where are the hot zones around the world when it comes to uh, this area of the uh, of, of the of the new society if you will people that are are transient that are online that are young that are adept with social media tools uh, that have uh, short attention spans uh, that desire to uh, uh, not necessarily circumvent authority but certainly uh, challenge um status quo uh, and and grow new mediums that uh, they feel compelling and and uh, comfortable within uh, blockchain radio when we launched it and and it's blockchain.radio the website so folks listening uh, to us if they want to check it out it's there uh, some of the info that you've brought up is available for them to uh, uh, to look at there uh, my sense of the uh, of the ecosystem was this there's there are really two tangible components of it uh, while our uh, our terminology is blockchain, it also encompasses the crypto community, those that invest in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, and all the rest of them, of which there are, last time I looked at the CoinMarketCap website, there were over uh, 5,000 cryptos and tokens of one varying value to another. And I, I would caution the listener that most of them are probably not really worth your time, uh, but certainly the top 100 or so uh, are... Um, representative of uh, of um, very exciting and uh, evolutionary activity within the space so where where do we go from here you know if you think about cryptos it all came from bitcoin and that's when i got uh, interested in it back in 2013 not that long ago but in the space of uh, the crypto world that's uh, getting pretty close to uh, the earliest days of it. And I did meet people at the time, James, if you can imagine, people who were some of the earliest investors, the earliest adopters, people that were buying uh, that form of crypto Bitcoin for less than a dollar per Bitcoin, <laughs> which really, wow. when you think about it, if they held on to it, they are massively wealthy today. But it just seemed like a, a fun thing to do. I, I remember talking to one person, who I think he his first uh, purchases were around the 45 cent range. And he, wow, kicks himself. he kicks himself, James, but he was happy when he sold it for a dollar. He figured he doubled wow. his money. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, so, Pierre, based on what you're, you've seen out there and what you've heard out there, what parts of the world, where's the regions of the world that are really hotspots for uh, cryptocurrency or blockchain? So it, let's take the crypto uh, uh, component first because – I think where we're seeing a, a real uh, embracing of that technology is in areas where um, uh, government authority is quite strong and people are looking for alternative uh, ways to, um, to indulge themselves, if you will. And so you take a look at China, you take a look at Russia, you take a look at some of the Asian countries. Uh, to a lesser degree, the African continent uh, because uh, a lot of the unbanked of the world are in Africa, and so they look for other uh, ways to uh, to exchange forms of value. And so for them, uh, forms of of digital currency in whatever form uh, that that's something that they can do off of their phone, their their mobile phones, and it sure beats uh, not having a bank account or a credit card. 
Uh, so in that in that sense, that has, those are big areas of crypto interest. But you also have Western society as well, Western Europe, North America, uh, where there are a lot of people that are buying into it, not a lot of trading. There's a lot of what's called hodling, you know, hold on for dear life. Uh, and that's hodling, and uh, that's essentially what uh, what you have in terms of a picture of what's going on in the world. Well, it's amazing. It's amazing. Blockchain dot radio and PR. Based on what you're seeing as well, where do you where do you see the end uses taking place? Is it is it mainly the financial industry? Is it the supply chain to uh, authenticate or or trace the supply maybe for fair trade, or are you seeing it in other areas? Where's where's the end use happening? Well, in terms of uh, the usage of crypto, I'm not seeing a lot of end use. If you were to buy Bitcoin, you'd be hard pressed to spend Bitcoin. You might buy other crypto with it. Uh, you might um, you might find sort of niche areas where you can use uh, use it as a as a uh, as a medium to buy something. Um, it's very difficult to turn it back into cash, for instance. You can do it. You can. There are exchanges around the world uh, that allow you to do it, but it's not an easy thing. You don't, even though uh, crypto uh, ATMs exist, um, they're not that easy to use or to find, for that matter. They're not as ubiquitous as what banks uh, have. Now, banks are very interested in digital currency, and at some point, they are. Uh, they are going to um, have to uh, adapt and deploy. Uh, but right now they're in an intelligence gathering perspective. And I know that in the conversations that my colleague on blockchain radio, Dave Moorcroft, has had with a number of people in the banking sector, there's a tremendous appetite, but there's also a great concern. Uh, what does it mean to status quo for them? Uh, what do they need to know? What are the risks both from a usage as well as a security uh, perspective. Keep in mind, a lot of the, the big exchanges uh, over the last five years have been broken into, literally, and uh, a lot of the, the value that was stored with them has been siphoned off. And so those are big uh, problems. Now, set aside, if you will, the crypto aspect of, uh, of this ecosystem, and let's go back to blockchain. Blockchain is just a technology. It's a technology that allows the exchange of crypto. It gives reason for many cryptos to exist. But blockchain really is an evolutionary uh, piece of technology that, to me, I think is in full mutation right now. And uh, when I'm talking as a as a radio host, as when I'm talking as an interviewer uh, to um, CEOs and C-suite people in the space, uh, they're full of optimism about how what they're doing in their uh, chosen segments of uh, of the global society, how they're going to change things. And James, you may you may have found this out yourself. There's a palpable uh, euphoria within that space of people who really feel like they're going to change the world. And that is reflective of what I recall seeing back in the mid 90s in the earliest days of the Internet, uh, when everything was going to be Internet, all of uh, status quo was going to be upended and either you adapted or you were going to disappear. And we, ha we have seen that with the advent of the Internet and the people I speak with in the space of blockchain and and there's a there's a huge uh investment community that is uh, pouring a lot of money into blockchain um concepts i'll say concepts because they're not yet uh, fully uh, fleshed out but a lot of uh, interest in silicon valley a lot of interest in in various other uh, technology areas in the world that are always forward thinking in their developments Pierre, what about the average person? Because you mentioned the average individual. Now, wh what what's the average individual going to see in terms of blockchain? Uh, what kind of app should we expect? Because you you talked about the internet is was uh, back in the early days, and people were anticipating it would be everywhere, and it is everywhere now. We have all kinds of apps. So, for the average person out there, what app are they most likely to interact with, which will be blockchain based? Well, let me let me put this at you. Uh, I think that at its best, blockchain will be something that nobody will see. It'll just make things easier, faster, more economical. So a lot of the things that are part of society today will be enhanced, will be accelerated, uh, will be uh, strengthened because of utilization of blockchain in the back office. I'm not quite sure that you're going to see something that is overtly blockchain, uh, but you may as well. But that, that remains to be seen. Uh, we may talk about it, but I think it's going to be something that's in the background. With respect to crypto 
or digital currency more specifically, I think that anything that makes it easier to transfer value. And uh, I know you're a, an author, James. If I want to transfer value that I have in my debit account or in my Bitcoin account or whatever other account I have, my credit card, and you want to transfer to me the value of your book, that's an even Steven transfer of value, right? And why can't that all happen digitally? So I think those are big things that are coming. And in those areas, you're going to see uh, the average person is, is going to see huge development on that. Not so sure, though, about blockchain. In closing, Pierre, let's just talk about blockchain radio for a moment there, blockchain.radio. And so far, when we talk about blockchain, it seems to be focused on individuals who are very knowledgeable. On your radio site there, are, are there also... Uh, streams or podcasts taking place uh, for the average individual to get acquainted with blockchain. I'm sure you you probably have conversations taking place which are quite detailed and maybe for the more sophisticated or knowledgeable individual. What about the average person? Is there something there for them and uh, blockchain dot radio? Yeah, and uh, in fact, if uh, folks go to that website, and thanks for bringing that up, James, if folks go to that website and go to the shows page, uh, there are some descriptions there. I think our intent is to appeal to everyone because I, I think everyone, everybody has an, has an appetite to learn. Uh, I, I recall a, a circumstance, James, and I may have mentioned this to you offline at one point, but I recall uh, talking, interviewing a CEO of a, of a new uh, blockchain-related company in Europe and they had raised a, a few million dollars and they were happy with what they were doing. And um, I won't you know, digress into what exactly they were doing, but the point is they were doing this, let's call it Project A. And then a few weeks later, I was talking with a CEO in Austin, Texas of a new company that had also raised a few million dollars. And uh, wouldn't you know that the project that they were working on was also uh, almost a mirror of this Project A that the Europeans were doing. Here's the key. Neither of them knew of the other. And today, uh, fast forward uh, a year, today, uh, one of those companies doesn't exist. So had they known in advance, had they known where things were going? So our intent with Blockchain Radio is to be a great platform uh, for people that are looking to learn, regardless of where they are in the food chain, whether they're coming at it as experts in the field, looking to find out what else is going on, whether they're people in the media trying to get uh, uh, authoritative uh, voices that are speaking to them through blockchain radio, or whether they're neophytes, uh, newbies, who are saying, boy, I keep hearing about this. Um, I don't want to invest. And I think your your new book talks about that, James, in terms of how do you invest and do you think long-term, do you think short-term? Uh, I think uh, we're hoping that our programming over a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week period will provide the necessary uh, tools. And then we'll have a an archive of podcasts so people can go back and uh, and search for material that they may have missed when it was uh, out on the audio stream. That's cool, Pierre. Thank you very much for that and uh, giving us not only that heat map, that action map in terms of regions and and uh, use cases, but also where we where we can learn more information about uh, blockchain, blockchain radio. Thank you very much for joining us today, Pierre. My pleasure. And we'll have to have you back again, perhaps to talk about information flows and how you see that taking place in our online world. Love to do that, James. Thanks for the opportunity. Okay.